What is the legal situation with regard to um, protections of the identities of ASIO or other security agents? agents? There was an organisation called the Campaign for the Abolition of Political Police and what they used to do is they used to turn up outside of ASIO headquarters which was then in Melbourne and they would take photographs and uh, otherwise try to identify um, employees of ASIO and um, a special law was passed in order to deal with that so it's an offence to identify an employee of ASIO so if ASIO does visit you and says I'm John Smith, I'm from ASIO then, um, then it would be against the law to go public and say John Smith works for ASIO but that's all that the law applies to so the content of the conversation, the fact that you were visited um, what they were asking you about, all of that can go public um, and given what I said earlier, I think it's a good idea if it goes public because um, it's a good idea for activists to know um, what, um, what sort of questions ASIO and the other intelligence services are asking about. ASIO has enjoyed a, a, a massive increase in mm. its funding over the last <coughs> 10 years. I believe a 500% uh, mm. increase in their funding has been the case. Um, mm. Do you think there has been uh, an effective expansion or the expansion of their role that is more than keeping an eye on things but actually intervening into political activities uh, you know, in the, in, of a legal kind? That's a really interesting question because historically ASIO was very much the... Um, it was very much seen as being the private force of conservative governments in Australia. And, um, and that's why when uh, Whitlam came to power in 1972, there were lots of Labour MPs and ministers who were very suspicious of ASIO. Um, and the special branches attached to the various state police forces. Um, I think since then, ASIO has um, uh, tended not to intervene, but to be more of an intelligence gathering and analysis organisation, um, rather than intervening in day-to-day -day politics. Um, but since the bombings in 2001 in New York, I think um, that there has been a move towards ASIO intervening, intervening more in a political way. Partly that's been done through legislation. Um, ASIO has been given, given some police powers. Um, with the AFP it can detain people. Um, it can oblige them to answer questions and so on. So there has been this blurring between day-to-day um, -day police work and the intelligence and very special powers given to ASIO. Um, and the other thing, of course, is that um, over the last um, uh, eight months, since November uh, 2012, um, ASIO has been approaching um, lots of people on the left. Um, ASIO, who, uh, those people have gone public about it. Um, and uh, that is an intervention in left-wing politics, and it is an intervention in day-to-day -day politics. Um, which is very unusual. The last person I know of who was uh, approached by um, ASIO before the recent approaches uh, was um, uh, somebody in 2007. And in fact, even then it wasn't ASIO, it was, it was the state police um, intelligence. Um, and prior to that, um, perhaps going back to 2003, 2002. So, um, so what um, ASIO and the intelligence officers connected to various police forces have been doing since November 2012. Um, this is really unusual um, and um, you can only speculate as to why that may be the case. It might be a permanent move by ASIO to be more active in day-to-day -day affairs um, or it could be more limited. They may be thinking of protests in Sydney and Brisbane to do with G20 next year and so they want to get as much intelligence as possible in, in preparation for that.